Hello, <clears throat> it's uh, Paul Beck with again. I'm talking about the the uh, climate change report that just came out in the U.S. and I showed in the previous video that in all the seasons the soil moisture is drying out. We're, even though we're getting more precipitation, um, the climate is much warmer, um, so the soils are drying out, and that is 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 beating out the um, additional rainfall um, effect. So that, of course, that has big implications, um, and there's less snowpack. So this has big implications on the number of large fires in each of the ecoregions. So in all the regions, we're seeing an increase in the um, in the number of large fires per um, region. Okay, and it's divided into all these different subregions um, that are color coded, you know, here. Um, and we can see basically the trends are that we're getting more and more of these large fires uh, because the soils are drying out, the vegetation is drying out, and it's being attacked by um, things like mountain emerald ash borer, mountain pine beetle, etc. So the forests are really, really stressed. And this is indicating that there's basically ecosystem changes. When a forest burns down, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be replaced by a new forest. Um, it might be replaced by savanna or grasslands because the climate is shifting um, in the U.S. Um, this is showing um, uh, tropical um, cyclones. And what it's showing is that uh, it's showing that tropical cyclones are um, they're, they're heading up to higher and higher latitude. So this is a shift over time as the ocean water is increasing in temperature. We're getting a shift in the latitudes at which these tropical cyclones can reach and that shift is 0.21 degrees of latitude plus or minus 0 0.13 degrees per per decade. Okay, uh, we just saw Ophelia, I believe, uh, you know, reach up to Ireland. That's a, an example. We're getting storms going up to higher and higher latitude. So this is a simulation, present day 244 category four, five, four to four or category five storms. This is showing where, they, they're, where they're located. So blue is tropical storms and then category one up to category five um, hurricanes. And this is, uh, you know, with the mid emission scenario, RCP 4.5, late 21st century, 313 category four and category five, those two categories of storms, so an increase, and they're moving up to higher latitudes. Um, and so they're more intense, and especially in the you know Atlantic Basin here. This is the Pacific Basin, sorry, the Atlantic Basin here as well. Okay, um, you can see more of them, and they're covering a wider part of the, a larger part of the Atlantic. Um, this is tornado activity in the U.S. from 1955 to 2013. So this is the days per year with at least one tornado in the U.S. And what we can see is, you know, we, the trend is going down, okay? So we're getting, you know, this number is about 100 versus 120, you know, 150 here. But these are the number of the days per year with there's, when there's more than 30 tornadoes. So that, we're getting more uh, days where there's a lot of tornadoes. So days that have huge numbers of extreme, uh, you know, very inst huge instability in the atmosphere, lots of thunderstorms, lots of tornadoes, uh, 30 plus, and you can see that that's on an upswing. So the nature of these storms is changing. And then there's something called these um, um, atmospheric, um, rivers, if you like. Okay, so here's an example, 13th of October 2009, an atmospheric river here coming into California, dumped 495 millimeters of rain in 24 hours. Here's one in 2006, dumped 625 millimeters in 72 hours. Okay, this is the percentage of the total rainfall that falls from atmospheric rivers. And we can see, you know, 30 to 50% is the green area. So lots of the rainfall 
on the west coast of the U.S. in California um, is in is atmospheric river events. This is the frequency of atmospheric river events and sort of the intensity. And what you can see is so 12% would be the dark color here. Nine to 12% is this. So that would mean uh, you know about 10% of the of the uh, days have atmospheric rivers here, or 10% of the storms. And this shows some of the, you can have these different categories of atmospheric river events. So cat one, two, three, four, four is over 500 millimeters of rainfall um, and so on. So this would be almost a category four. This would definitely be category four or five if there's higher categories. So, so um, this is a big factor for the West Coast. Um, when we talk about the, uh, also in the report is, this is land use um, and land changes, um, how that affects climate. So, you know, we get these, the natural environment, the anthropogenic environment. So we have natural fire cycles, we have wetland changes, we have forest changes. <coughs> and uh, what we can see is these are the increases of atmospheric greenhouse gases, the CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, NOx, which is in a greenhouse gas, and aerosols, and you can see, you know, they'll all be increasing from natural fires and so on. Um, wetlands, they capture, um, there'll be less CO2, more methane, um, as there's more wetlands and so on. So you can look at how, you know, what happens when we deforest, um, you know, we affect these gases, okay. Um, we, a lot of CO2 is released and, and so on. Um, it changes the heat balance, it changes uh, the, the, the uh, moisture balance. Um, this is irrigation and agriculture, rice cultivation, burning agricultural waste uh, uh, to clear uh, lands, for example, burn down forests, plant uh, palm trees for, for palm oil, things like that, how it affects the different uh, components here. Wildfire regimes are changing, so we're getting lots of emissions of all these gases. Uh, pasture land for livestock, reforestation pulls CO2 out. So different land use changes and how it affects the balance of greenhouse gases is very important and discussed in this report. Um, these, this, this shows you the radiative forcing. Um, so again, the, the total was 2.25 watts per square meter um, and th uh, there's a chunk of that is from land use changes and this is from non land use changes okay and then that's broken down here into the different greenhouse gases aerosols albedo etc so it shows all the different components and when you sum them all you get this type of thing okay so obviously you know as, as we're warming uh, we're getting an increase in the frost-free season length, and this is what we've had, uh, you know, so far, um, and this is what we're projecting in the future. So as we go, you know, as we proceed and we get more and more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and climate change gets worse and worse, we have a, we have a large increase in the number of frost-free days. Um, and this is the agricultural growing days. I believe these are days um, that you're above five degrees Celsius or 41 Fahrenheit. So growing season, you know, growing season is increasing. But as we know, um, you know, because we're getting warmer, growing season can increase, CO2 levels higher, so things can grow faster. But we're finding that that doesn't translate into more nutrients in the crops. And it also doesn't mean that the crops are going to increase in yield. Um, Okay, the Arctic is a huge impact on the rest of the climate. It's discussed a bit in this report, the 1984 ice extent versus the 2016. Uh, a lot of multi-year ice. So this is four plus year ice is four years older or more, one to two year, which is first year, one year ice is first, first year ice. What we're getting is we're getting, we're losing most of the ice and it's mostly first year, so it's thinner. And I've talked about how the satellites have trouble picking up on the thickness. So this is the sea ice extent drop over time. Um, and this is changing the heat balance on the whole planet. 
So these are some of the trends in the sea ice melting from 79 to 2013. You can see this is the trend. Um, so the melt season is um, <coughs> the sea ice melt season. We're, we don't have sea ice forming up in these regions. So, so the sea ice, um, you know, it's going, so it's not able to melt out. So we're getting warmer and warmer waters around where the ice forms. Um, the trend is, this is the, 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 the days per decade, loss of days uh, per decade, less and less ice. Um, this, is, uh, the, this is the mass balance of various glaciers, um, the mass uh, cumulative clim climatic mass balance of glaciers. Um, the, the loss is getting larger and larger. We're losing the glaciers. Um, this is an example, I think this is a Muir Glacier in Alaska, 1941 and 2004. This is a standard image that is shown here. They could have updated and shown something new. You know, as, uh, this is ground temperature in Alaska. So what we're seeing is the temperature is increasing. This is different locations. This is about 20 meters down, you know, about 66 feet or so. Um, down and the temperature is rising so it's not just rising in the atmosphere it's not rising just rising in the oceans it's rising at the surface in the soils and it's also rising to depth um, as the heat gets uh, transferred um, so we're losing the uh, permafrost uh, sea level rise is discussed um, so this is the rise expected um, in feet over a century and what you can see this is a Greenland ice sheet ice shelf melt component Western Antarctic ice sheet Eastern Antarctic ice sheet glaciers all of these combine to give you um, These uh, you know a rise in sea level and the different rates on the different coasts of the US are shown here So very large rises down in the Gulf of Mexico for example Okay, uh, the red areas are larger rises, and these are <coughs> non-climate processes, so isostatic rebound. You know, this was all covered in ice, which pushed it down, it's still rising up, so that can cause an apparent lowering, you know, it can mitigate some of the sea level rise, whereas down here we have deltas, a lot of sediments are, are deposited, and that land is sinking because it's heavier. Um, this is uh, the sort of the temperature where we are, you know, where the CO2 level was in 1890, about 280 parts per million, 2017 over 400, where we're projected to go by 2100 with our present rates of emission. Right now we're one degree to above pre-industrial. Um, and, you know, when we look 125,000 years ago, um, marine isotope stage 5E, we had a lot of melt from Greenland, a lot of melt from Antarctica, sea level was six to nine meters higher. This is about 20 to 30 feet higher. And um, three million years ago, um, when, and the greenhouse gas levels were lower here, the CO2 level was here. Of course, uh, you know, when it was last 400 parts per million, about three million years ago, sea levels were 10 to 30 meters higher. Um, you know, 33 feet to almost 100 feet higher. Um, and sea levels rapidly rising. Um, these are some of the image is, so the sea is expanding. That's the systeric rise. There's more mass of water going into the ocean. This is from, you know, glaciers on land, Greenland, Antarctica, it's rising. Add these up, you get the sea level rise here. And these are some of the changes here from 93 to 2015 you know, inches of rise per decade. So some regions are rising faster than others. A lot of the east coast of the US is faster rising than the average. These are different emission uh, models and sea level rise. And, you know, we're looking, you know, eight feet by um, 2100. I think we're gonna do much, much better, much faster than that. This is uh, what we're projecting under the intermediate scenario. So very fast sea level rise here. Um, different rises. So right, you know, we're getting coastal flooding and this shows different coastal flooding in different places. And, uh, you know, the ocean's heating, heating very rapidly to great depths um, and expanding. 
and ocean acidification is occurring, the pH is dropping, the 